Hello students. Today we start very important concept in the first few syllabus and important topic also as per the theory point view and as well as the multiple choice questions point of view. It may be for generally or it may be for the week. So here, so far we have discussed the laws of motion and work energy power and some concepts of uh, equations of motion in the previous topics. Okay. So regarding that, particularly in the laws of motion and work energy power, when we discuss regarding the motion, there we have studied some three different types of motion related to the coordinate system. One dimensional motion, two dimensional motion and three dimensional motion. Where we have observed for which type of the motion with respect to the coordinate system we call as one dimensional, two dimensional, three dimensional for any kind of the body it may be under consideration. Okay, like whenever we started explaining one dimensional motion, two and three dimensional motion, usually we consider a body. Okay, and that body, like examples we take a car or a person moving on a road or walking on a road, a car is moving on a plane road or a train or a bird which is flying in the space. All those examples, whatever we take, we consider them as a body, consider an object. Here, we discuss some different types of the motion which is executed by the bodies under consideration. But here, the body which we consider or object which we consider in this concept where system of particles we are represented and related to that in a rotational motion. Whenever we consider a body, so that body of course may possess the motion and whenever we talk about the motion the body may consider to be under moving or under motion whenever an external force is applied on it according to the Newton's second law. Because as per the Newton's second law, unless and until external force is applied on any body, the body continue, continues to be in its state of motion or continues to be in its state of rest. Which means, when you apply the force, then only the rest body starts moving or a moving object comes to rest. Hence, an external force concept also exists in the that concept of uh, Newton's second law. External force is required, additional force which makes the body to move or which sets the body to move. Likewise, when that body is considered which is under the motion, what type of the body we are taking, example, okay, what kind of the body that we consider, what characters of the parameters that we can measure for it, like even this chart piece which I hold can be considered as a body or this duster can be considered as a body. Okay, if I keep the duster over here, it will be continuously in rest unless and until I apply the force on it. Okay, once with a certain force, if I throw this duster, then the duster starts moving from one place to another place. So this duster is a, can be considered as a body. Even this object, of course it is cylindrical type. Okay, this object can be considered as a body to represent motion but difference in this object and even this object is like these two differences are the material may be different definitely and shape is also different of course we can see the color is also may be different but of course we are not bothered about the color a uh, shape may be so this is quite rectangular and this is a uh, cylindrical shape okay so likewise the body is under consideration what we let for example this cylindrical object okay it is of course considered to be a body for explaining any concept of the physics but here the question comes here the body when set to under motion when i apply the force on it it will set up under the motion it will move definitely it will move or we can say that it will roll on the surface because since it is a cylindrical so that 
its surface is spherical hence definitely it will roll on the surface like this it will roll but whereas this object may not roll but in instead it will slide okay so that is the difference again this motion and this motion is different because it rolls it moves by sliding by itself but the body is what we consider of different shapes the question is when i apply the force either on this body or either on this body whether these body during the motion or after applying the deforming force i'm talking about deforming force okay which are studied in the second part of your syllabus that is a uh, mechanical properties the solids are totally properties of the solids so deforming force is nothing but the force which i'm applying to make this body to move as uh, simply we can say it is an external force when external force is applied whether the body either this cylindrical body or this rectangular body will change their shape or any dimensions of this object definitely not because we do such kind of the experiments regularly in our life even a glass of water even any object it may be a vessel it may be a textbook it may be a notebook it may be our uh, cell phone itself or it may be anything else even a bicycle it may be a bike okay all those objects whenever we consider those objects okay the objects after applying the force will they change their shape and size of course they may based on how much force you apply okay definitely it is depends upon the force if you throw this object hardly on the ground then because of that force with which i have thrown it to the ground it may break into two pieces so that there is a change in the shape and size because the applied force matters a lot it may change in the shape itself it may not be rectangular when it breaks into two pieces or even multiple pieces also the shape may not be the same it will different and even this may be the same thing may happen okay so that the force whenever it is applied to make a body to move that body after applying the force should possess the same uh, shape should sustain the same shape such kind of the body we call it as a rigid body we call it as like a rigid body okay which means after application of the force the body will not change any of its dimensions or even we can say that the shape or even particle wise also if we take all the particles of the body will remain at their individual respective places because this body is made up of so many number of particles okay the minute particles microscopic particles also we can say and all the particles they are placed at a certain distance from each other and of course they are very close to each other microscopic we we put it it may be in the terms of microns or even it is still more or less place but even we have the particles even this is like it is an iron piece that iron particles are very close in the subject but even they have a certain distance between each other when i apply the force on this body the distance between the particles should not alter but actually when the force large amount of force is applied there may be possibility of slightly getting disturbance in the position of the object so that an ideal rigid body i am not talking about here ideal ideal means definitely it should not change its place whenever the force is applied on any body there may be some deformation takes place and that deformation if it is negligible practically it is so so that we call that body as a rigid body okay so regarding this rigid body i need the types of motion we are going to deal in this topic so that's what it is called system of particles okay because this rigid body will contains so many number of particles in it all together is one system all together is one body 
so that it is system of particles which is considered to be a rigid body okay so now with this rigid body whenever it is set up under the motion then it may have a linear motion usually linear motion means when i throw any object like this if i apply a force on this object then the object may start moving straight like this it may start moving slide slightly on the surface but whereas in the cylindrical shape it will start rolling on the surface so this type of the motion whenever i consider okay for any rigid body then if it is a linear motion then that body will be moving with a certain amount of velocity imagine this is the surface on the surface an object has been kept with a certain amount of mass when the force is applied on this body then the body will start displacing in the direction of the force and it will start moving with a certain velocity v so this is we call it as a linear velocity it will definitely start moving it means it will slide on the surface but even then it is considered to be under motion so this body starts moving with a certain velocity v but at the same object if i place it over it in flat surface the two differences we discuss in the same object if it is placed over a inclined surface same mass then of course even a small amount of force is sufficient to move this body the body starts sliding on the surface on this horizontal surface which is inclined at an angle of theta so this body will starts sliding even this body starts sliding on the horizontal plane surface and this also moves on a horizontal surface but it is inclined one okay so hence during this when the body starts moving with a certain velocity v it is imagined that whole body not imagine even we can observe that the whole body will move on the surface the entire body it is not the part of the body which is going to be moved for example if i make this body to move on this board uh, then slowly this body starts moving on the surface since it is vertical so that the gravity makes this thrust starts moving if i want to move this on upside then i should apply the force but here without any force if i leave this thrust then the thrust starts moving very immediately very quickly okay so it means this thrust slides on the surface so during the motion of this thrust imagine this itself is an inclined surface so during this motion the entire thrust of this object which i considered as a rigid body will move with a certain velocity okay will move with a certain velocity of course if i consider this vertical means acceleration due to gravity also acting on it because of that it is moving but my concept is when this starts moving on the inclined surface the body moves on the inclined surface with its particular velocity under the action of gravitational force but whenever it moves this rigid body the entire body is moving entire body is moving it is not the part of the body which is front side and which is back side is moving first time moving final it is not like that the whole body is moving okay i suppose if i put a mark over this uh, dust considering this is one particle this is another particle this is another particle when i make this body to slide over this or move over this surface inclined surface all the particles will move together with the same velocity same velocity all the particles of course it is very simple concept to understand like you can see that whenever the any rigid object or whenever such kind of the objects okay when they are placed on an inclined surface they will start moving okay it is just like uh, inclined surface which you usually see in the gardens for the playing of the kids even the person also starts moving so the problem here what the physics behind this we are explaining is whenever the objects are moving they are moving as an entire rigid body this type of the motion what we consider wave the velocity remains the same
the velocity remains the same linear velocity of all the particles all particles will move with same velocity for all the particles okay such kind of the motion we call it as translational motion or translatory motion it is called as translational or translatory motion okay where the object whenever it starts moving the velocity of all the particles is same at that instant of time and entire body will move with the same velocity or we can say that all the particles in the body will move with the same velocity so this we call it as translatory motion okay even on this horizontal surface also whenever the body moves on any horizontal surface all the particles will move it is simple example like a bicycle when you consider a bicycle if a person is riding the bicycle the bicycle moves on the horizontal surface in this direction if you imagine the bicycle is moving then with respect to this point and this point whenever it is set to under motion entire cycle moves with the same velocity linear velocity i am talking about entire cycle will moves with the same velocity there is no difference between this part of the bicycle or this part of the bicycle the entire bicycle moves with the same velocity every point of this entire bicycle moving with the same velocity that is called as translatory motion and in this bicycle if i consider a wheel okay wheel which is circular in shape or we can say it's spherical in shape in such example whenever i consider a v okay if a spherical surface is moving on the plane surface then it will start rolling over the surface like this it rolls and starts moving from one point to the another point so here also the entire body whole body which is of course spherical in shape moves with the same velocity moves with the same velocity but the question comes here from one particle to another particle and imagine this is one particle this is another this is another this is another particle which is present on that surface as the angular velocity is considered it is the same but now if the body is moving on the plane surface it will possess angular velocity also since it is moving around and around we call it as a spin motion it is rotating and as well it is displacing from one point to another point it is not like this example okay it is moving itself and even rotating itself and even moving from one point to another point in such case particle at first point particle at second point third point fourth point whenever i consider with respect to the positions individual particles may have different linear velocities and talking about linear velocities not angular velocities linear velocities okay will have different velocities i mean the point for example this bicycle somewhere exactly at the center we say axel axel so with respect to this point this uh, tire of the bicycle will be rotating and this point is considered to be axis of rotation like exactly at this point if i write okay this is considered to be axis of rotation anyway under consideration is axis of rotation this one where this rotating body will have certain angular velocity and if any body is moving 
are rotating with respect to a fixed axis then that kind of motion we call it as rotational motion okay for a rigid body now we are dealing with two different types of the motion one is translatory motion another one is rotational motion in the translatory motion the whole body whenever it moves on any surface the linear velocity of all the particles will be same it means the velocity of all the particles is same as the top the whole body at the same interval of time whereas in the rotational motion the body moves with a fixed line with respect to a fixed line this body will rotates around that fixed line it is not mandatory that the body should be in circular shape okay the body should be in circular shape it is not mandatory so only the thing is it should have rotated with a fixed axis for such kind of without considering any circular shape of the body we can define this rotational motion rotational motion of a door when you will open and close the doors then here somewhere we have a fixed hinges it may be a window or a door even a gate also we can consider whenever we open or close a door they will rotate around this fixed axis around this fixed axis the door will get opened and closed it is not like a physical movement of the door which can be replaced like i am taking the door outside and again keeping like this in such case we can say that is completely physical displacement of the body here also the displacement is going to be takes place with a certain angle theta exists here the door is getting opened and it is closed but this motion of the door is has some reference point we are closing and opening the door with a certain angle while closing and while opening but motion of the object it means the door is along this fixed line this we call it as axis of rotation it may be a door it may be a window or it may be a gate of your compound okay so it is moving around this fixed axis or fixed line we call it as that is called as axis of rotation even if you take an example of ceiling fan we have a rod for the ceiling fan then we have a disc then we have the blades of the fan so when this fan starts rotating okay like this is starts rotating it rotates i am talking about it rotates so rotational motion we are talking about along this fixed axis it is a rod around this fixed axis the fan is rotating okay so this is rotational motion angular velocity x2 exists whereas for any rotational motion of the body from the fixed axis this is one particle this is another particle this is another particle the particle distance is different from the fixed axis so that the relation between linear velocity and angular velocity will be considered so that we have equation v is equal to r omega so that the linear velocity is different for this rotating body because it depends upon the position from the axis of rotation we can say that it is a radius vector so position of the objects or position of the particles of the entire rigid body with respect to the axis of rotation so that every particle of this rigid body is at a different positions is at a different positions so that with respect to the position when i consider then this position vector exists hence as it is very small then linear velocity also decreases even if i say if this body exactly if i consider at this point then the velocity may be zero so that can be explained in another example like
consider the axis of rotation this is our axis of rotation around which an object is considered to be under rotational motion and it is not considered to be the body is of spherical shape the body may be of any shape like this this body may be of any shape imagine this is our axis of rotation this is axis of rotation with respect to this axis the body is rotating around the this axis of rotation either it may be clockwise or anti clockwise if not we can consider this still more bigger body of irregular shape like this okay so then when this type of the body i am not talking the we are not taking the body as a spherical shape it is irregular shape any body it may be so here the particles of this entire rigid body with respect to the axis of rotation may be at a different position it is as the first position consider this is at second position one more we will consider at exactly on the axis then let us consider it is r1 and it is r2 and it is at this point this position is r3 then when the, this body starts rotating around the fixed axis okay this body when it starts rotating around the fixed axis like this okay when it starts with the fixed axis rotating around this fixed axis let us consider how the particles will also execute that rotational motion definitely the particles may be giving a rotating in circular orbit with the same radius vector r1 r this is the radius vector of second particle but what about this r3 it is almost zero because the particle is lying exactly on the axis exactly on the axis with respect to the position of r1 and r2 as we compare r1 is quite bigger r2 is this this smaller distance whereas r3 exactly lies on the axis of rotation with respect to this equation v is equal to r omega when i am writing the first particle let us consider as p1 and it is p2 and here it is p3 the first particle will have more velocity linear velocity than the second particle and second particle velocity is still more than with respect to the third particle whereas third particle velocity is whereas r equals to zero because it is exactly lies on the axis hence v equals to zero so here for this particle v is zero it means that any particle which is executing rotational motion but if that particle lies on the axis of rotation its velocity is considered to be zero whereas other particles will have different velocities linear velocity i'm talking about linear velocities even for a object if it is spherical in shape like if it is rolling or showing the rotational motion like a tire we can say in the fixed axis particle at this point particle at this point particle at this point all these will have different positions okay even particle at this point will be having different positions it is r1 r2 r3 r4 linear velocity is different but whereas all the particles will possess rotational motion with the same angular velocity but linear velocity is same since whenever i consider this position the linear velocity is as we defined v is equals to displacement rate over time hence when this particle comes to this position with a certain time to a t1 then this particle may not come to the same position in the same time interval it will take the different time interval okay it is just like this when this particle starts rotating okay so at this is a one particle this is another particle when it starts rotating the displacement of the particle and the time interval how much it is going to be take will be different as the linear velocity is different it is based on the position vectors or position of the particles with respect to the fixed axis which we call it as axis of rotation okay 
so that is we call it as the rotational motion okay and even one more example we can consider that is the top the spinning top okay <coughs> consider a spinning top now the top is spinning like this then this line is considered to be axis of rotation but even this spinning top can align itself with respect to the axis of rotation even the spinning top can change its orientation sometimes it may spin like this also when it comes with a slower uh, rotational motion or it is coming to be at rest even it can lean then even whenever it leans it will rotate around this fixed axis like this it will rotate okay in this direction it will start rotating like this okay from this direction to this direction okay. <coughs> i will consider this example initially it was rotating like this but now it can rotate like this in this way so that even it is rotating around its own axis and as well as it is inclined to the axis of rotation this rotation we call it as precision we call it as the precision it means it should have a spin motion and as well as a rotational motion so here the two different examples where i consider the part of the which is rotating around the fixed axis they are with respect to the axis on the plane surface they are rotating perpendicular to the principal axis here also the spinning top is also rotating around the fixed axis but it is also having a spin motion as well as a precision precision means it is moving from this point and coming to the same point it is just like the rotation of the earth the earth is rotating around its own axis of course which takes 24 hours to complete one cycle or one rotation and it is rotating around the sun the sun is considered to be the axis of rotation around that point the earth is rotating it is precision which way takes 365 days to complete one precision one cycle one around we call it as okay that is the precision we can say like this for a rigid body we have consider, we have considered the different types of the motion one is translatory motion rotational motion and even the precision also we have discussed even one more example of this rotational motion is the potter's wheel the potter's wheel it rotates it is a rotational motion the axis is this one on the fixed axis the potter's wheel rotates so that it possesses angular velocity so now for every particle wherever we are considered so far what we are discussing is one is rigid body as a whole the types of motion it is showing rigid body as a whole the types of motion that is translatory rotational precision are two types of translatory motion and rotatory motion the entire body that they are, they are going to be show are exhibiting that is rigid body that is one concept and another concept is the particles of that body even the every particle like x1 r1 r2 r3 but we are taking at point p1 p2 p3 so during this rotational motion or translatory motion all the particles when i consider then the slight difference in the linear velocity and angular velocity we have discussed so here as a whole body 
we have discussed in the translatory and rotational motion and the particles of the rigid body how they shows the same rotational motion and translatory motion so now instead of considering as a rigid body or as a system of particles of the rigid body there are so many number of particles which are present on all the objects whichever the bodies we have considered so far it may be wheel it may be a solid uh, sphere or it may be a solid rectangular object or it may be a fan ceiling fan it may be a wheel it may be a top it may be a potter's wheel whatever it may be the object all those are rigid bodies so for such kind of the rigid bodies the body may contain so many number of particles with respect to the axis of rotation at a different positions even those individual particles also possesses rotational motion and even linear velocity that concept also we have considered hence before going to either may be rigid body or it may be a particle system of particles it is a system of so many number of particles definitely but which one we should consider whether the individual particles are a rigid body instead of that now we have a new concept of the rigid body that we call it as center of mass of the body in short we write as cm center of mass of the body which means the entire mass of the body is considered to be concentrated at a certain point at a certain point entire mass of the body is supposed to be concentrated at this point so this may be with respect to axis of rotation at a certain distance r so this point we call it as the center of mass where it is considered that the whole mass of the body is supposed to be concentrated at this point that is called as center of mass the new concept we have to discuss so regarding the center of mass and rotational motion we will continue in the next class